them. All right, so on Friday, we talked about limits in general, what they were or what they are, and how we find them graphically from a table, and then we will look at them algebraically a little bit more starting tomorrow. Um, but remember, your limit is what you are approaching, not necessarily where you get to. So maybe you get there and you get the pizza, and maybe you don't, right? So we're going to look today at one-sided limits. We kind of talked about it a little bit on um, Friday, but I didn't use the words one-sided and two-sided. So, so far we've looked at the value of a function as x approaches c from each side. This is called a two-sided limit. Okay, they got a match coming from both sides. We've seen examples in which a function approaches a different value from the left side than it does from the right side. Those are one-sided limits. So to denote that what you are looking for is a one-sided limit, if I have a limit from the left, so if the value of f of x approaches a unique number l as it approaches from the left, you'll have x approaches c and you have that negative sign up there kind of in the exponent. I know it's really hard to see on the board, but I think you can see it on your paper a little bit better. Um, and if it's from the right, you have a unique number as it approaches, remember keyword is approaches, from the right, you have a little plus sign up here. So it's approaching from the right, approaching from the left, not going to the right and going to the left. Okay? So if we look at this graph here, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is going to be negative 1. And as x approaches 2 from the right, it's going to be 1. Okay, we good with that? All right, good deal. Um, so let's, we're going to look at each one of these graphically. Today you're not going to need to use Desmos for your assignment. It's going to be on Delta Math, so you'll have your, um, the stuff will all be there. But I am going to use Desmos to show you these graphs. So on this first piecewise function, we want the limit as x approaches negative 3. First from the left, then from the right. So as I approach negative 3 from the left, my limit is negative 2. As I approach negative 3 from the right, when I get to negative 3, it says undefined, but that doesn't matter, I am approaching negative 7. So from the left, it's negative 2. From the right, it's negative 7. We good with that? All right. So for the next one, we want to approach 0 from the left and from the right. So as I approach 0 from the left, I'm approaching 1. As I approach 0 from the right, I'm approaching negative 5. Okay, we good with that? So that is 1 and negative 5. For number 3, we're approaching negative 2 from the left and the right. So remember these little vertical things, we just ignore those. But as I approach negative 2 from the left, my limit is negative 5. As I approach negative 2 from the right, my limit is 5. Okay. So negative 5. So the next one, we are approaching 1 from the left, 1 from the right. What number are we on? Four? All right. One from the left. What am I approaching? Oh, that's the left. What? One from the left. What am I approaching? Infinity. One from the right. I'm approaching negative infinity. Remember, infinity and negative infinity are technically not your answers. Um, it's increases without bound and decreases without bound, and it does not exist, but we're allowed to go ahead and write it like that. Just have to clarify. All right, so then negative 4. Negative 4 from the left. Negative infinity. Negative 4 from the right. Infinity. All right, we good with that? So that's negative infinity and infinity. And then the last one is pi halves from the left and the right. Well, this is 3, because this is in terms of pi, so pi halves is right about here, plus it's the secant of pi halves, right? What's secant the reciprocal of? Cosine. What's the cosine of pi halves? 
zero. And what's the reciprocal of zero? Undefined. So that helps us know for sure that it's here at this asymptote. So when I'm approaching this asymptote from the left, I'm going to infinity. When I'm approaching it from the right, I'm going to negative infinity. What questions you got? Okay, good deal. So that's looking at one-sided limits. Then when we look at the existence of a limit, so a two-sided limit exists if and only if both the left and right limits exist and are equal. And again, that's kind of what we looked at on Friday because we didn't talk about left and right. We just knew that it had to be approaching the same thing. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l if and only if the approaching from the left and approaching from the right equal the same thing and they exist. Okay. So here on these, some of it's just asking us for a two-sided, some of it's asking us for a one-sided, so we have to make sure we're paying attention to how it's written. So on number seven, I want the limit as x approaches two, just approaches two in general. And if I substitute in two, I'm going to get zero over zero. That's that indeterminate form, so we would have to do something else algebraically, which we'll look at tomorrow, but we can look at it graphically today. The limit as x approaches two, I would say it clearly exists, right? But when I go to x equals 2, x equals 2 is undefined because we get that 0 over 0, right? But that totally doesn't matter. As x approaches 2 from the left, I'm approaching negative 2. As we approach 2 from the right, I'm approaching negative 2. So my answer is negative 2. On number 8, I just want the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. So as I approach negative 1 from the right, it's negative infinity. So on number 9, I want the limit as x approaches negative 4. So negative 4 is right here. As I approach from the left, it's infinity. As I approach, approach from the right, it's negative infinity. Are those the same? No. So my answer is... It exists from one side or the other, but they're not the same, so overall it doesn't exist. On number 10, I need the limit as x approaches 3. The limit as x approaches 3, this is negative infinity, this is infinity, so what's my answer? Does not exist. Why do I have a different answer on number? Did y'all disagree with me on number nine? I have something else written on my paper. Let me figure out why. Oh, I know why. No, I don't know why. Yeah, I do know why. Because we want the limit as x approaches what? Negative four? This is a negative four. Where's the asymptote? Negative three. Not a negative four. So as x approaches negative four, I'm approaching, when it, at negative 4, I'm undefined, but on either side of it, what am I getting to? 4. It's not D and E, it's 4. I wasn't paying close enough attention there. We good? Okay, so lesson on that is just because it looks like there's, just because there's an asymptote doesn't always mean it, that you're using the asymptote, but also pay attention to your graph because I totally didn't look at it right. All right, so on number 11, we're look, approaching zero from the, which direction on number 11? Left. So as I approach zero from the left, my answer is negative infinity. On number 12, x approaches 1. As x approaches 1, we're going to infinity on both sides. So what's my answer? Infinity. Technically, it does not exist because that's one of the times it fails to exist when you have a vertical asymptote, and infinity is not a number. So that's why, since infinity is not a number, we have to say, like, it increases without bound. All right, on number 13, I'm approaching zero from which direction? The right. So as I approach from the right, my answer is infinity. All right, on 14, I'm approaching zero. 
from the left, it's infinity. From the right, it's negative infinity. So what's my answer? Does not exist. Ooh, oh, crap. I don't know where this happened, but I'm going to have to start over. All right, does not exist. So we are on number 15. Let me get there. And I'm approaching what from where? Because I can't read on. Five from the left? Okay. As I approach five from the left, my limit is negative one. All right. All right, number 16. Notice again, this is another easy one. You could have figured it out on that as well. But if I substitute in one, I'm going to get zero over zero, right? So the whole substituting thing doesn't work. But as I approach, did I go too far? Dang it. As I approach 1, right, so you can see that at 1 we're undefined. I put a table on here also because we have to be able to do it from a table. Um, 0.999, it's almost 0 0.5. 1.001, 1 .001, it's almost 0 0.5. And so my limit as I approach 1 from both sides is going to be 0.5. 17, the limit as x approaches negative 2. From the left is negative 1. From the right is 3. What do we want here? Just the limit in general? So what's the answer? Does not exist. Is that not just... Number 18, I want the limit as x approaches negative 3. From which direction? The right. So as I approach negative 3 from the right, what's my limit? Zero. Same from the left, right? But it didn't ask me, ask me for it, and that's fine. All right. Then I have a cotangent function. As it approaches 0 from the left, ooh, as I approach 0 from the left, it's negative infinity. All right, and then... The limit as x approaches pi of negative 2 cosecant of 2x. Just pi in general. All right, well, here's 5. Here's 3. So it looks like pi is this asymptote right here. Right? Are we, is it just in general? Yeah. From the left, it's infinity. From the right, it's negative infinity. So what's my answer? Does not exist. All right, so the limit as x approaches pi fourths for the sine of x. So pi fourths, like if this is 3, so pi halves is right about there, pi fourths is right about there, but it's not like I can, so we know it exists, right? And it's because it's going to be the same from the left and the right. But um, to get an actual number, what is the sine of pi fourths? Square root of 2 over 2. Remember, if you can substitute it in, you can substitute it in. It's fine. You don't even need a graph, right? Here, I want the limit as x approaches pi fourths from the right. The tangent of pi fourths is what? 1. So you're going to get 1 over 0, which tells you that you have an asymptote there at least. So here's 3. So this is pi half. So pi fourths is here. I know it's going to be an asymptote. Which way are we coming from? The right, so I can't draw my little paper. So I'm approaching what? Infinity. Okay, so then I need the limit as x approaches pi sixths of secant squared minus three. That looks like this. All right, so here's three, that's like pi, right? Pi halves, pi six is in here somewhere. So I know it exists, but I don't know exactly where it is, so we're gonna substitute it in. What is secant the reciprocal of? Cosine. What is the cosine of pi 6? Square 3 over 2. Okay. So we're going to end up squaring whatever value we use, right? So the reciprocal of square root of 3 over 2, I can use as 2 over the square root of 3 is fine because I'm about to square it. And then I'm going to subtract 3. So that's going to give me 4. 
thirds minus three. I can make the three into nine thirds. So then my answer is negative five thirds. All right, 24. Well, if I substitute in zero there, I'm gonna get zero in the denominator, which tells me at least that I have an asymptote there. So that's something, but that doesn't really help much. So here's that, as, so, as x approaches zero, what's my answer? Does not exist, because from the left, it's infinity, from the right, it's negative infinity. So my answer is B and E. All right, what questions do you have? All right, good. 